Hello friends, uh, good evening and uh, welcome to ESAN Academy. We are into embedded system programming and uh, today we are going to discuss about microprocessor. This is session one and my name is Balaji Sheshadri and I have given my WhatsApp number 90429-14720. If you want any doubts, anything, don't hesitate to contact me on this WhatsApp number or send me a mail on this ESAN Electronics at gmail.com. I'm always uh, approachable. Okay. So let us, let us uh, getting into the thing microprocessor, what it is, because the whole, uh, our course, uh, embedded system programming is microprocessor. That's it. So you can call wherever microprocessor is used in electronics. All those things are coming under the embedded system. That's it. Simple, as, as simple as that. If some system in electronics, you know, electronics have three branches. One is called IC design, one is called uh, embedded system, one is called board design. So if any uh, circuit uses microprocessor, then that's called embedded system. That's it, simple. So uh, we will discuss about uh, board design and VLSI at the end of this uh, embedded session, not now. So, and today we will talk about uh, this session. In this session, we will talk about uh, introduction. Okay, so what is this microprocessor? And uh, let us try to, uh, normally there are uh, uh, multiple ways uh, people approach the uh, every topic. And normally we approach from uh, known to unknown. So what do you know? So every day what uh, interaction, what we know is a, a simple uh, human. So let us try to compare the uh, human, versus, but may not be so perfect, but it will give you the small idea. It will give you the, a uh, small idea to dis uh, understand about what is microprocessor. That's it. So let us take a human being. Okay. And we know that the whole human being, every part is important. Every single part is important. Your leg, hands, your stomach, heart, everything. But ultimately, everything is controlled by the head. So you know that head is the very critical part. So we are going to uh, discuss about the head now okay and inside the head okay you have so many parts nose mouth ears okay everything but eyes and all but we are going to uh, discuss about uh, what is inside your head that's about your brain okay and so let us take only the brain out of the head so now, if you uh, zoom the brain, it has so many, it's a, it's a collection of, you, know, you we call one brain, but it is a collection of so many parts. Am I right? That's a trick of the uh, your wonderful assembly of brain. Then let us take one by one out. And that this, this is uh, one part, and this is another part. We are not teaching biology, so I'm not, I'm not going to uh, discuss about all the names of the parts or anything, nothing. Why I have uh, displaced the part is to give you a small idea. And all these parts are connected through nerves. You know that they're all connected through nerves. And the communication is through neurons. That's fine. I'm, I'm not getting into the biological or biomedical things. Now, one of the parts out of this is very important in this. This part is called process part. This part does all the processing of your brain. And this part is the one which holds the memory. All your uh, memory things are uh, remembered at this part. This is called uh, frontal lobe. This is called temporal lobe. And you have so many lobes. Each, this part controls your hands and legs. This part controls your eyes. Okay, each part, this part uh, connected to your heart. Okay, uh, they call cerebellum. And you have so many parts. And let us not worry, we take only one part. The whole brain, we take only one part. That part is this frontal lobe. And later we will use temporal lobe, okay. The frontal lobe is the one which does the processing, but it has a very, another intelligent thing called thinking, which we don't have, we are not worried about. We are just thinking about only processing part. So, this is a one of the part of your brain. Your frontal lobe is not brain. Frontal lobe is a one of the part of your brain. Now, 
what we are going to do is this we are going to morph the frontal lobe as a micropause that's it both are same what the frontal lobe does and what the micropause does or say now the micropause is what is that it is nothing but it has so many pins am i right this is a component manufactured by the companies so it's, you can call it the frontal lobe is manufactured so one of the part of your brain we will discuss what is brain later brain is brain is normally compared with a microcontroller or soc brain is compared with soc or microcontroller both are same microcontroller and soc both are same uh, when i use the uh, uh, microcontroller in uh, mobile, mobile phones or uh, laptops we call that as a soc that's it uh, if you use the microcontroller in uh, uh, electronics i call it as a microcontroller that's the same thing now this micropause has so many pins to connect to the out we connect everything through wires that is why these pins are the one which are the one which connect your micropause inside to the outside world okay now let us see uh, let us go through inside micropause okay, that's very important so let us see what it is uh, it has a small uh, silicon okay metal and the circuits are there and the wires are uh, taken out and the wires are connected to the pins through this okay this is what happening inside the ic manufacturing unit okay then what then let us remove this uh, top level uh, kind of pins let us talk about only the bottom one so what is inside this is a base this black one is a base over which we put the silicon then if you see that uh, only that part the silicon part forget about all the other things now we take only the a small silicon portion okay a small this is what the uh, part where your circuits are placed inside okay that if you want we will discuss in our uh, electronics uh, session the electrical and electronic session we will discuss about how this is manufactured don't worry about that right now uh, right now don't worry about those things now this part is what this see that the internally have uh, uh, so many circuits okay if you zoom still big it will so this is what they uh, put it inside the silicon okay they how they do it let us see a small thing let us have a small intro this is what the circuits all the uh, green ones and blue ones are wires and all the uh, yellow and uh, pink ones are silicon okay that's why they they uh, make the uh, process and do that don't don't uh, this all we will discuss in our electrical and electronics in depth don't uh, right now worry about this see uh, this is what the trick you you are you have to be uh, understand what is your role you are not going to be the uh, car engine designer you are going to drive the car embrer system is is driving a car okay like uh, using the microprocessor <coughs> understand designing the microprocessor is the other batch that is called vlsi okay so don't get confused between these two fields of course we will know that we will discuss what is inside everything i am not going to say that no no i am not discuss but initially as a driver if you say that if i don't understand how the ic engine works if i don't understand if i uh, put the brake uh, how the brake is working then you will never be you will never get a driver so as a driver you should know what are the operation i should do to drive the car that's it that's that's a successful be a successful driver first then once you become a successful driver then learn it how the car is working fine that's good okay but don't get confused now let us take only one i have so many circuits and i'll take only one circuit now and all these circuits are nothing but and or not like like we have a, a in our mathematics we have uh, four operations addition subtraction multiplication division but the whole uh, microprocessor is built with 
these three gates and or and not okay this we are going to discuss in depth in our digital electronics session in the coming days okay right now don't worry about that right now as i told you that the top level we understand this microprocessor circuits are built using these gates okay and this is what a, a simple uh, circuit of a, a, only one uh, gate this is one gate i have i have drawn is a one gate and this is a input and these are outputs out okay so this is a simple uh, circuit don't worry about that next and this is about a simple gate and or not these three like how in the schools they teach you addition subtraction multiplication division if you know these three gates successfully clearly and you know i know that most of you know that but the only problem is you don't know how these gates are used so effective such a way, such a way that i am sitting in uh, yet controlling a uh, satellite in uh, mars or land rover in the mars how i am going to move it's all very easy that is what our course our course is course is all about this electronic controls how we are going to do that so don't don't leave it till you learn it this is your responsibility to learn it is my responsibility to make you to learn and your responsibility is to learn we both are synchronized both are to be synchronized okay now this part is what very bottom level So I tell that the P subtract is nothing but a, uh, some sort of silicon added some material. We we will be we will be knowing that, but I'm not going in depth. That we we will discuss about all this uh, uh, P E N all these things uh, N well everything and P well all all these things in our electronics class. Not now. This is the microprocessor session. But I have to tell you that what is the bottom level? Okay. But you come here. This is the one component which turned the whole world. This is a This is the invention of the century, last century, twentieth century invention is called this component called transistor, and we built all this and or and not gate using this transistor. That's it. Your microprocessor is full of transistors. Nothing more than that. Your microprocessor is full of transistor. How the transistor is? The transistor is used to build the gates, and the gates are used to. build the logics and finally the logics are used to build a your microprocessor now let us go to the next and uh, the people those who invented the transistor got the nobel prize and this is the biggest uh, invention afterwards the growth of the electronics was very exponential it is giving you the life for most uh, thousands and thousands of engineers okay so we have to be thankful for the people and the bell laboratories next now this microprocessor internal vc okay what is that there are four parts internally one is called process which does your addition subtraction multiplication that's called alu we will we'll discuss thoroughly don't worry this is only a very top level picture the top level i i, I wanted to give you what is inside then we will go in depth and the memory this time we have a, in our brain we have a small memory if i ask you to add Four plus five. What do you do? You remember four and five, and you add, and you tell me nine. Am I right? So you have a small memory, but we call them as a register. And interface is the one which this microprocessor is talking to the external world. But these are all all the three: process, memory, and control. All the three are happening internally to the chip, internally to your frontal lobe, but your frontal lobe is connected with the outside components through the nerves that is what this interface how your internal uh, my uh, silicon is connected to outside world that is called bus interface unit that's called bau or we call it the interface okay so now we have uh, slightly compared your brain with the microprocessor understand okay now let us see that how microprocessor functions how we are going to use it 
the two have to be in line. How microprocessor functions and how we are going to use it. That's most important. If you know that how the microprocessor function, if you don't know how to use it, no company wants you. Okay. If you know how to use the microprocessor effectively, every company wants you. That is what your embedded system programming. Okay. That is what your embedded system programming is all about. So the main central part of your embedded system is Micropass. As I told you that you can you can say in one word. If a system use microprocessor, that is embedded system. That's it. That's nothing more than that. Okay, in electronics. Of course, you have a computer that uses a microprocessor. We don't call it the embedded system because it's a general purpose computing engine. But if you use it on electronics, so uh, that we will discuss a small debate. What is the difference between a computer and embedded system? We will discuss these things later. Okay, first today's session is about microprocessor. So let us, as usual, after the intro, I'll to explain more deep depth. Let us go to the board. Okay. I hope I would have given a, a small idea about what is. So it is a, it is not brain. Please understand, this is not brain. This is one of the part of the brain. Okay. Now. Let us talk about this is a microprocessor, which has a small block called process. What it does, it does very simple addition. It does addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. It knows how to do this. Then it does another three. Or and or not. That's why we call this as a ALU. Arithmetic and logic unit. Arithmetic logic unit. And this microprocessor We can call it a mu p. It's a very famous one. It's a very very simple component. Please understand. Even I I will, I will go in depth later. I will go later, not this class and not later. Once you have uh, familiar with this, how the microprocessor work, I can explain to you. Then we have a small unit called memory. A small memory. But as I told you that we call this as a what? Register. Both are same. Please understand. It's, it's, uh, there, is, there are a lot of confusion here in electronics. We have a, a terminology called latch. We have a terminology called register. We have a terminology called memory. We have a terminology called storage. See, so many things for everything. All are, all are, all are coming under memory. So we have uh, so many divisions. So people normally uh, get confused between memory and storage. And people get confused with register and uh, memory. But to be frank, all of them are same. But depends on where you use it, how do you use it, uh, they had given a to it's all to differentiate to differentiate uh, they had given a uh, so we, we have a thing now uh, lake uh, river pond well everywhere water but you know that if i say a lake you know that it's a it's a bigger story a sea it has water it's a big and you know river it is running so everywhere water uh, storage but we are giving him different different name here same thing on our memory a latch is a memory, a register is a memory, a memory is a memory. That's it's unfortunately, they keep the memory, it's a memory, and uh, storage. Okay. So now, so this is called, as I mentioned to you, that compared to your brain, this is called frontal lobe. This is one of the parts of your brain. Like, so 
there were there were three things involved please understand three things one is called product one is called system one is called process please understand these differences process is the main one okay okay that's why it's called they put always in the middle process and surrounding the process you have system and surrounding this is you have a product in our ebrd system programming the process is going to be microprocessor in your human brain the process is frontal lobe and system is nothing but your microcontroller or soc in our embedded systems okay because sometime uh, when you go a bigger embedded system uh, people use the word called soc okay soc is not only used in computers nowadays that's slowly uh, getting into the uh, electronics also in embedded also and the final one is product what are you going to use the microcontroller any product could could, could be a uh, uh, player video player tv or uh, video player remote anything anything you can you can define any product product is top level the product uses the system like that in your system you have a, a frontal lobe and the brain and all all the other hands everything all the devices are controlled through this not the micro micro processor do not control you to you directly so here what happens is this so please don't get confused this is i told you frontal lobe your frontal lobe is having a small memory like if i ask you 4 plus 5 you take plus 4 plus 5 what is happening is this process can talk to only the local register this process cannot talk to the outside world so if you want to do anything that has to come from outside to this local you can call this as a local memory please understand this call local memory that's all we call as a register okay this outside one is actually called in your brain is called temporal lobe where for example your uh, teacher taught you in the school how to multiply a two digit number am i right like yesterday we discussed 25 multiplied by 63 your teacher taught you hey 5 into 3 15 5 1 2 into 3 6 1 7 6 5 3 0 3 2 into 6 12 plus 3 15 you add 5 7 5 1 so you have you know the procedure this procedure is stored here if you know the procedure then you know multiplication if you don't know the procedure you don't know the multiplication now when somebody ask you to uh, do this okay as i told you that please understand this is what the trick you have a frontal lobe and you have another path in your brain let us say which is connecting your eyes okay this part is communicate with your eyes and talk to your uh, process unit frontal lobe that is that is your this is your brain that's why people will say that there is some problem with the brain cell uh, you lost the control over your hand or control over your eyes control your legs it's because that particular uh, part is having a problem but your brain will be functioning but the particular part is bad so when you write on the board 2 plus 3 your eyes sees that and give it to the frontal lobe understand that's a trick but then your guy decides how do i process it then he goes and sees this uh, how this guy stores the memory how it is taking we don't know but here we know in microprocessor this guy 
is using only gates and or and basically it uses the transistor as a switch so this whole microprocessor is full of only switches that is what we are going to discuss how your uh, software how your c programming is controlling the switches at the end of the session you should be thoroughly understand about that but we have so many methods of discussion uh, this discussion is different method where we discuss top to bottom let us understand about microprocessor first then we will go how the microprocessor works so this is a path microprocessor digital electronics and electronics and the electrical that's a way instead of going the other way because in the colleges everywhere you learn the other way that's why you always see everything as a much complicated way this is the top level approach so what happened this guy like a nerves in your uh, brain how the two parts are communicated with nerves here they communicate through wires they communicate with wires the messages are passed there is between these things are all uh, some messages which we i don't know sorry here i know that we are passing through numbers we are passing through numbers that's it now i have a wire in a wire how do i pass a number okay it's a very simple i have a battery i have a bulb i have a switch if you want if you want to pass a number 10 you press the switch 10 times if you press the switch 10 times then the bulb is going to be on and off 10 times it could be how far it is it doesn't matter it could be even one kilometer away i can pass the number 10 understand but you know that if you want to pass the number 100 then i have to do 100 times if you want the number 1000 i would do 1000 times it will be very very slow then only people have found so many method one other method is very simple if i have a one wire if i have a one wire i will on or off off means zero on means one i can put two numbers if you have one wires and one bulb i can convey from x to x to y two numbers zero or one then what they have done is i added one more wires i added one more wires two wires now two bulbs what do let's say one is red bulb one is green bulb now both red and green are zero zero off and green is off red is on green is on red is off green is on red is on there are four combination we give zero one two three understand that is as simple as that so what they have done they add one more wire then blue that mean i get three wires so i get 2 power 3 i can pass up to 0 to 7 please understand if i have here i start from 0 not from 1 that is a very important idea in this microprocessor world or in this digital world so if i add one more wire i can i can go up to 2 power 4 16 numbers so let us <coughs> think of it if i have 10 wires i have to draw i get bored so what we do here is very simple way i put slash 4 instead of drawing four wires i'll draw one wire i put slash 4 that means that four am i right instead of writing one lakh i'll put one lakh so simple instead of writing one crore i put one c so easy am i right is a 1 million i put 1m is very easy so we always try to put a shortcut one other shortcut here is this called bus 
It's a group of signals. That is what they communicate in the memory. Please understand what the microprocessor, there are two things. Please, please understand this. Microprocessor can do two activities. One is internal. Other one is external. External. This is only two. Internally, that's process. Externally, that's storage. Store. Because I have very small memory. I cannot remember. That's why I store everything outside. Okay. There are multiple types of storages. Okay. Let's see. I have a human being. As a frontal lobe, the brain, I have a small register. Then I have a temporal lobe. I have a memory. But this itself is limited. That's why I have a notebook. I store it on a notebook. Am I right? Same thing. In your system computers, you have a microprocessor which has a register. Then the outside, there's a, a IC called memory. And then you have a hard disk. You have so many things. For SD card. You have a pen drive. You have a SSD. N number of things. That's called storage. So please, please try to, uh, not to get confused, but I'm trying to compare what is available, what do you know the terminologies? I, I hope most of you know about uh, uh, computers, other things, that's why I'm, I'm taking those things. So it's, it's uh, initially uh, try to understand this, but slowly you will start uh, forgetting other things you get into the microprocessor fully in coming days. Okay. Now, there are two things. You have to remember only this. How thing is, is the moment I talk about microprocessor, it has two ports. One is called Internal, other one is called external. That's it. Internal, it does process. External, story or reading. I store and read, or we don't normally call the reading as a store and load or write and read. Both are same. Either store and load are same. Why they call load is this. What is happening is this. There's a confusion. In your case, human case, you differentiate between 75 and plus and 45. For you, these things are having a different. This is called number. This is called symbol. Am I right? But unfortunately, our man, microprocessor, who understands only number, his language is called number language. His claim is called number language. So, what he does is, what he does is any number first he gets, if he gets the first number, 75, he treat the first number as a always instruction or operation. Like normally you have a convention like this. You write like this, 75 plus 43. But because you know that this is symbol. But what this uh, here in the microprocessor is, you have to write like this, plus 75, 43. This, this operation has to come first. That's the only small convention difference between, so I write like this, instead of 75 plus 43, I write like this, plus 75, 43. So this becomes one, two, three. This is called operation. These are called operands, okay? We call this language, this microprocessor language, eh? machine language. We call this as a machine language, please. What your language is Hindi, English, Tamil or Malayalam or uh, French or German. This microprocessor language is number language. That is called machine language, both are same. It's actually a number language. And, and also the number language is speciality. This case, number language is binary number.
okay so we'll 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 come we'll come in the depth slowly don't worry about that so what this guy does is like this he has two set of wires let us assume that in every line on the memory every line okay i store eight bits this is called one byte i told you in the yesterday class itself we have a general convention is byte is a measurement 1 gigabyte ram means byte your hard disk is 500 gigabyte your uh, pen drive is 32 gigabyte your sd card is 64 gigabyte we always use byte as a a uh, measurement of memory okay that is a standard so same thing we are using now every line we are storing a byte understand what this guy can do this microprocessor is he can read from any line let us say i have about 1000 lines 0 to 1023 that is notebook understand this is a notebook or you call memory okay so this processor can read from the memory and he can able to do that he can see first of all understand this microprocessor with the external i told you the two operation one is internal go one by one slowly other one is external there are two activities microprocessor can do when i do the internal activity i could do the process how i do process between the process unit and the register that's a process is nothing but the alu you uh, just only arithmetic and logic unit there are only very few operations you will you will you will start surprising the moment you start learning the microprocessor more and more you will be surprising hey what a such a simple component is controlling the world that's a trick that is a trick we all have to thank to the one of the great man charles babbage who who understood that uh, this can be automated the computing okay now the trick here is this is what internal the external is read and write that means that this microprocessor can read from a notebook that memory it can say that what line it is this is a wire set of wires if i'm assuming that i have 10 wires you know that 2 power 10 means 1024 that is 0 to 1023 so using this 10 wires this microprocessor can read from any of the line or write into any line for writing or reading he uses this set of wires eight so i have i have two directions i can write or i can read but this one i can only show address is unidirectional so sorry this uh, wires there are two set of wires we call this set of wires as a address because that is used to point the right location on the memory and this set of wires eight wires called data because you are reading the content of the wire please understand i have two set of wires one set of wire is used to point the location where it is another set of wire is used to read or write the content but how the guy will know that i want to write or read for that there are two more wires that's it you'll be very surprised you will be very very surprised to know that this is what from 1971 to 2022 all the microprocessor does nothing more than that please understand i may I, it, it may be uh, so simple but that is what nothing more than that okay if 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 you have any confusion here any time you can stop okay don't mistake me so i have a processor like a frontal lobe it does the processing of addition 
subtraction, multiplication, division, and and or not. Take only seven operations. We will discuss about other operations later. Let us not worry too much. Once you master the seven operation, all the other maybe few others are very few operation. Uh, we we are going to you will be very surprised. Only using this we are doing everything. You do all the digital uh, money, digital economy, digital control, everything, all IoT, all networking, everything because of this. You'll be surprised. If whatever level you want to go, you with me, I'll I'll, I'll give you the uh, maximum of this. Okay. And this KE can only do this. But what to add, everything is given by this guy. Okay. Now, this guy communicate with the outside world using the set of wires. Now, what, why? I'm telling you now. One is called read wires. Other one is called write. There are, there are four wires. One is called address wires. A set. One is called read wires. One is called write wires. One is called data wire. That's it. Now, it's a very surprise one. I told you that read or write. That I will, I will expand it now. Then you will surprise. The first operation is like this. Read from external memory to internal memory. Same way, second operation is write, sorry, sorry, here, sorry, one thing. Read from external memory and write to internal memory. Same way, the second operation is read from internal memory and write to external memory. You understand now? This case, this, you'll be very surprised. Please understand. This is what all about your microprocessor, your embedded system programming, everything is all about. If you understand these two lines, we have done. That is what we are going to discuss, how to implement these two in our whole embedded system programming, nothing more than that. Please, let me be very, very clear now. Even if you ask me after two months only, this is what you will be surprising. We are going to do two activities. Read from external memory and write to the internal memory. That is called register. And read from internal memory and write to register. Understand? Now I can write like this. The first operation is like this. I can say, I'm reading from external memory. We call load. We call that as a load. I can write it in full English itself. Load. To register. This R means register, internal memory. And from external memory, I have this out to 1023 from anywhere, 512. This is external memory. Understand? Suppose internally, internally, I have more than one register. I have R0, R1, R2, R3. I have three, three lines. I have three lines. I have a very small notebook with only three lines or four lines. Then I can go like this. R0. That's it. And instead of writing so big word, we make it so small. We write the word in a, a small cryptic way called LD. This is called load. So if I tell the microprocessor, hey, load from R0 from 52, he will do it. But how to tell? That I'll tell you next. That is what we're going to discuss next. Same way, the other one is store R1 to uh, 856. That means that this guy understand, oh, 
I have to whatever is there in my register in R1. That is also 8 bit. This all of them are 8 bit. R0 is a 8 bit. R1 is a 8 bit. All of them are 8 bit storage. So this and this are same. Whether I can, I can exactly copy this into the thing. Indirectly, I'm asking you to copy only. This is a copywriter. This, this microprocessor does only that. It's a very surprise. The whole invention is great, but the operation is very simple. Don't get confused. Okay, don't get confused about the operation. It's a very simple. We, we write in cryptic form. We write in cryptic form. ST, R1, You can have any combination, man. You can have any combination. You can say LD, R0, 98. LD, R1, 783. LD, R2, 431. LD, R3, 121. LD, R4, 0. I can read from 0 also. So, I can, I can show LD, R5, 1023. I can, it's a maximum. I cannot, because I have only 10 wires. With 10 wires, 2 power 10 is 1024. That is 0 to 1023. Always, please understand always that you reduce one less because we start from zero. And that's the thing. So this, so please, please understand. Forget about internal, all the things. The microprocessor is doing two activities always. One activity is as simple as that. That is, think of it. It is, this is a very, very beauty of the system and which is going to really make you to surprise that it's such a small system is uh, controlling everything. You Whether you want to control the motor, whether you control the lights or whether you control display, all are happening because of this. That is what we are going to discuss, how it is discussing. So this is connected to set of wires called address. I can have a set of wires 20. 2 power 20 means 1 million. That's why I always write a small number. Okay, I write a small number because 8, 10. 2 power 10 means 1024. Easy to remember. 0 to 1023. Second wire is called read. If this microprocessor makes this as a 1, then memory understands, hey, this guy is writing. Then there is a wire called read. See, please understand here everything they write in a cryptic way. That is a problem here. That is why we get confused. We write, write as WR, read as RD, address as A, data as D. That's it. Nothing great about it. So don't get confused about all this naming convention. We have a, because I, the, you know that we engineers, I wanted to save my time. I want to save my time. Now, here, data. I can write or read. This only is bidirectional. But, but please understand, the very first microprocessor designed by Intel, 404 in 1970. Well, this is core i9 in 2022. What you buy a laptop and everything. Okay. All are doing same. All are having only, only thing is instead of 8 wires, somebody may have 64 wires. Instead of 10 wires, somebody may be having 40 wires because I can address more memory. That's all. Nothing more than that. So please understand. And there's only one read, only one I. See, please understand this microprocessor can do only two operations. And it has internally a registers. Called R0, R1, up to R, whatever it is, 31, whatever it is. Understand that this guy is having a 31, 32 registers internally. I can move from any of the internal to this guy. What? How the microprocessor does, that is what the trick. Now, we'll come to the very, so, now I told you that the microprocessor can move store or he can load two things. So that I have given you the two instructions. One is called store any register. I call Rx. 
you can you you can replace the X with zero to thirty one. Anything as you wish. That depends on the micro bus manufacturer. Somebody may be having thirty one. Somebody may be having fifteen. Somebody may be having hundred. Don't ask me why it is. That's the way they manufacture. And comma the address. I can store. So this means that if I put store means I am reading from register to the memory. That's it. Is the direction is this? For example, if I put if I say let us say that my R one is having forty five. Now, if I say that store R one comma eight thirty one, now what happened? This guy, this microbus, I put eight thirty one here. How it is putting eight thirty one? I have ten wires. Since I have a ten wires, I have ten wires, I call these wires as A zero, A one. A two, A three, A four, A five, A six, A seven, A eight, A nine. That is zero to seven. Ten wires. Now, in the ten wires, there is a combination for eight thirty one. If you convert the eight thirty one decimal into binary, okay, you will get about thing five twelve one, and then two fifty six one. Like that, you go. If you add them, you get about seven sixty-eight. This is eight thirty-one. Then you add one more, one twenty-eight. It's more, so it does not work. Zero. You you learn you learn the. Uh, I, I I told you now. I'll upload the number system video. Learn it, or if you already know that how to convert the binary to decimal, that is fine. That that is a totally different topic. That is not worrying. But it's all. But I cannot go. I can I cannot store like this, thousand twenty four. That is not possible because with the ten wires, the maximum number is thousand twenty three. Okay, now please understand. Tomorrow is off day. If you could able to make your use of number system video which I'm uh, uploading today, I forgot to upload yesterday. I will upload it today. That video talks about how to convert decimal to binary. Binary to decimal. Please learn it. Let us not waste too much of time on this. But uh, if somebody wanted, we can do that also. Doesn't matter. After the video, you say that uh, I I wanted to because most of you may be knowing that. That's why I don't want to waste somebody's time. Now, if we do the instruction load R zero R thirty one comma ninety eight, then what this guy does? He put address ninety eight. He does not put write. He put read as one, and from ninety-eight line, the data may be thirty-six. It comes via this guy, two or thirty-one. So please understand. You think that you think that you are controlling LEDs, motors, uh, bulbs, uh, so many things, networking, all these things. But whatever you do. You are doing only two operations. Whether whether you write the uh, language in Python or Java or C plus plus or JavaScript, all are doing only these two activities of writing to memory, reading from memory. You'll be very surprised. Is a that's what that's what the bottom level. So the microprocessor can do only two activities outside. Please, please remember this. If you don't remember this, then the whole thing is going to get confused. Also. The microprocessor does another activity is this. That is, he does. This is the process. This is register R zero to R thirty one. Small memory. I give a name called R zero. Now, I told you now plus seventy five forty six. No, he does not understand what this process unit does. Say. You have to give him like this. Hey, add R zero plus R one. Put the result in R two. Understand now. He will he will take from R zero. He will take from R two. He will perform the addition. Then, for example, let us take an example. Let us take an example. In R zero, if R zero is having forty one, R one is having thirty six. 
R2 is having 25. If you tell him R0 plus R1 is R2, what our man will do this process, he takes from here 41. He takes from 36. Both are coming here. So he will add 41 plus 36. What is it? He got 77. Then he write the 77. Our man write the 77 who the ALU into R2. I can do anything. I can say R5 plus R7. Put the thing on uh, R25. R3 multiply by R6. Put the result on uh, R15. Any combination. That's all. You don't do. You only your imaginary is a combination. I can, for example, I can do like this. R6 divided by R2. Put the result in R3. I can do that. R7 and R8. Put the result in R1. Okay. I can do that. R3, R with R1, put the result in 26. Then I can also say that and of R2, put the result in R13. So you understand now. That is, I have, I have used addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, but please understand this guy never, this process unit ALU never talk to the external unit. All the things have to come to my local RAM, sorry, local memory, a register. So your local memory is called register and external memory is called memory. When I, when I use memory, that is external. When I use register, that is called internal memory. So this is the symbol of AND. This is a symbol. Or this is a symbol. Not this is a symbol. That's why I use the C symbols. Like your addition, subtraction, we have symbol. We have a symbol for all the operations. I, I told you we will discuss about seven operations first. Then we will discuss about other operations. Now, so everything is done, man. Now you know that microprocessor does two operations. Internal, two process. External, storage. That is read and write. That's it. The microprocessor can do with the outside, write or read, two operation. Internal, it does process. It does not process with the external memory. It has to come always to this. Okay, but now you learn what microprocessor can do. Now microprocessor know how to do things. But the only problem is, the only problem is, the microprocessor does not know what to do. So please understand the confusion between these two. How to do and what to do. You have a wonderful servant. You have a wonderful servant who knows how to do things. But you should tell him what to do. Then he will do that. How do you tell him is a trick. Once you learn the trick, once you learn the trick, how to get the work done by the microprocessor or your servant, you are the best manager, man. You are the best manager, okay? Or the best boss. That's what the trick here. That is what exactly the thing. You, you know that now in a car, I have brake. I have a gear. I have a clutch, I have an accelerator, I have a steering. You know that all of them. And you know each one is performing its own activities. So anybody, anybody who in the car, anybody applies the brake, the car is going to stop. And anybody applies the gear, it is going to change. Anybody up, give an accelerator, the car is going to move faster. 
and anybody is saying god is going to turn and what is the difference between beginner driver or novice or expert what is the difference between them that is what the trick here also this microprocessor knows how to do but if you give him what to do then he is going to do he does not differentiate whether it's balaji or whether it's the vallab whether it's a pratik or whoever it is this guy does not know he is going to do what you say he is a simple machine that's it but how we are going to give it that is what we are going to see in our next session okay so this i have given a very small introduction about what is microprocessor am i right 